What's up preppers, Community Prepper here. Today we have a short but very informative video about how to store meat for up to a three year shelf life. Last night I went out to Lowe's, I bought this chest freezer. We're gonna do the unboxing of it. We're gonna talk about some of the specifics, the nitty grit about it and what you should look for if you're in the market for a deep freezer. We're also gonna talk about how to prepare your meat for long-term storage, how to label it, how to put it in here and not have it get lost on piles and piles of stuff, leading to wasted food. Stick around, short video, but a lot of good info. All right, preppers, as you can see, this is the box. This is a, as you can read probably, a seven cubic, pubic, cubic, cubic, seven cubic foot, seven cubic foot chest freezer or freezer chest. What this does is it's gonna, I'm gonna put it into um, my laundry room, which was right over here. Here's a video right now that I filmed earlier with the spot that it'll be going to and it'll fit nice. I measured it and let's get to it. So. I'm gonna unbox this sucker and we'll go over what you should look for in a chest freezer if you are in the market. So as I'm doing these, I will talk you through it. So the first thing you wanna think about is the size, the size of the chest freezer. Obviously you wanna measure the spot that you're going to have it in your home or in your garage. If you do plan on putting a chest freezer out outside and not keeping it in your home, you have to make sure that it is equipped for that. Some of them have a temperature rating where they'll function between zero degrees Fahrenheit up to hundred degrees Fahrenheit. That's something you gotta look at because it'll void the warranty. It might not keep your food cold if you're putting it in a hundred degree garage in the summer. The um, second thing you wanna think of is the capacity. Now, this is a seven foot. Now this is just for, you know, me basically. So it's probably overkill for what one person needs, it's probably more suited for a family of four because this is massive and you'll see it when I unwrap it just how big it is. I looked at it at the store last night and it's huge. So I can fit a ton of stuff in here. Um, the third thing you wanna do is look at the power efficiency. Now most of these current um, freezers and refrigerators are very power efficient. This one in the brochure said it's gonna cost about $18 a year to run. That's pennies on the dollar. I'm not even gonna think about it. Second thing, I'm sorry, another thing you wanna think about is the location you put it in, in relative to the noise. Some of these do make a little bit of a hum. So if you're putting it close to where you might be sleeping or working or studying or whatever you do, think about the noise factor. Um, another thing you wanna do is make sure that it has adequate baskets in it and just not an empty hole where you'll be losing food. It's easy to fill these things up and then not know or remember what's at the very bottom and then you're wasting hundreds of dollars in food. And um, another thing you wanna think about is defrosting this. Now these, according to the research I did, they don't require uh, defrosting the fridge, meaning pulling everything out, unplugging it and letting it melt, you know, you get that frost inside. They're um, pretty efficient or they're pretty uh, technologically advanced where it's not like your old school freezers where you gotta pull everything out maybe every six months to a year to defrost it. But this one you can defrost and it does have a drain plug on the bottom. And all you gotta do is take the food out, bring it up to room temperature, the ice will melt and you just tip it forward like you're um, draining a cooler, pretty much. Finally, the last thing you wanna consider, well not the last thing in the, any order, but is the cost. I only paid about $250 for this. This is definitely one of the lower end as far as pricing goes. There were some at Lowe's yesterday. Um, obviously they were bigger, but they went up to about $800. And then I've looked online and did my research and you can find these things from anywhere from hundred bucks up to like 2,200 bucks is what I saw some for. All right, enough yapping, let's debox this. Ta-da. Okay, so I was wrong on one thing. Right here on the energy guide, it says estimated yearly energy costs, $30. Okay, 18, $30, $12 off, but still, 
honestly pennies a day to run this thing. Um, it is a hot point brand. Um, did a little research into the brand. Um, the reviews on YouTube were fairly decent. So like I got $250 for this thing. Uh, it's not breaking the bank and it does have a warranty on it. So let's open this. All right, cool. It does come with a basket, like I said, organization. But it does have a, uh, a small basket. Okay, I'm hand holding the camera now, but as you can see, it is pretty, pretty large. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab just a can. Let's grab a can of soup, just to give you some reference. I'll put it at the very bottom. So that's it. I mean, it's huge. It it's, has more room than I could ever fill. I mean, you could probably put 200 pounds of meat in here. So we'll just do a little walk around too. So this is your temperature gauge right there. That's your drain plug if you wanted to frost it. You come around the side, it is a, a highly technical piece of machinery. It has a cord that plugs into the wall to make it turn on. So very simple, very straightforward. Now let's get to uh, filling it up with some meats. All right, preppers. This is the area that I pre-measured out in my laundry room, AKA storage room for various prepper needs. So I knew that the dimensions of this were less than two feet wide and it would fit between the hot water heater, part of my prepping pantry, um, and here's an outlet. So let's undo this tape, we'll plug it in. And it does say, or the videos I've watched, said that you wanna put it on about a medium setting on the uh, freeze level plug it in let's see if it kicks on oh hear it probably not and then i'm gonna put it up against the wall but before we do that we're gonna go over something that is about just about the best most satisfying thing when it comes to buying a new appliance that's peeling these things off oh. Everyone likes peeling the protective film off of their elect electronics. Oh, yeah. All right, so we'll push this up against the wall and let's move it over here so the cord, when I open it, actually the cord won't even get in the way because it doesn't open that far and it does have an automatic kind of stay feature. All right, preppers turn my kitchen into a studio. It looks pretty nice, I think. Probably do some more, maybe cooking videos in here down the road. Um, so let's talk about vacuum sealing. What causes freezer burn is basically moisture and air. So when you get some nice juicy chicken like this and you add air to it, over time, it's gonna get freezer burned. It's gonna basically look like it's uh, got snowed on. Now. Freezer burn food technically is still okay to eat as long as your freezer maintained a zero degree Fahrenheit to 10 degree Fahrenheit temperature range. If your food fully defrosts and then refreezes, that's when it's time to get rid of it. So what I need to do my vacuum sealing is a vacuum sealer, some vacuum sealing bags, a scissor, and some meat. Today we're doing chicken breast. So when you are planning to put meat into serving sizes, think about what you'll be pulling from your stores to feed you, you and your wife, you and your family, however many people. So for me, I think I'm gonna do maybe, maybe six pieces at a time. So I'm going to cut a bag long enough to accommodate six um, these aren't, these aren't breasts, these are thighs, sorry. But, um, oh, I'm at the end of the roll anyway. So what I wanna do is I do wanna leave some room because when you do put this in here and it does its magic and sucks all the air out, it is gonna suck some of the juice up. So you don't want the juice to go into your food vacuum sealer. You wanna leave enough room so that, maybe a few inches, so that when it, the juices come up, it, uh, 
it doesn't ruin or contaminate your food sealer with um, bacteria that could be on the meat. So let's get to this. I just put the bag in a little bit, close it down, lock it, and I hit seal. There's a seal option and a vacuum slash seal. Vacuum will pull all the air out and then it'll seal it when it's done. So the sealing process only takes a few seconds. That's it. So now I have created a bag. One end open, one end closed. So let's open this up. Now when you're putting meat in, you don't wanna stack it. You wanna lay it out flat. And if you're using something like ground beef or ground turkey, you wanna remove it from its store-bought container because these are not made for long-term storage. These are made for about six months. These, the way we're doing it, it could go up from two year to about three years. So I'm gonna put, let's just put four or five in here for now. And I'm gonna lay them, I'm gonna flatten them out a little bit, get them nice and good, and I'm gonna rinse my hand off. So like I said, if you're going to take maybe uh, some ground beef or ground turkey or whatever, you wanna pull it out of the store-bought container. You wanna put it into a freezer bag and then you wanna smush it down. Smush it down, make it flat for two reasons. One, it's gonna freeze very fast. And when it comes time to defrost it, it'll defrost a lot faster in a nice thin sheet than a big hunk of ball. So I'm gonna open this up, put the end of the bag in, and we're gonna suck all the air out of this now. So I'm gonna open it, and now we have sealed chicken, no air in it. So now what I'm gonna do is one of the last steps. I'm gonna get a Sharpie, and I'm gonna write on this bag what it is and the date that I made it. Chicken breast. I'm sorry, chicken thigh. And today's date, December 29th. So 12, 29, 22, almost New Year's. So now I'm gonna go put this in the freezer. So let's talk about how to organize your food next. For those of you who already have a working pantry with non-frozen foods, you probably have some kind of inventory list, meaning you know how many cans of soup, you know how many cans of tomato sauce, you know how much dried pasta you have, you know how much stored rolled oats you have, etc. If you don't, it's a really good practice to start keeping an inventory in your working pantry as you are with your frozen pantry. So I am going to make a spreadsheet and they'll probably be chicken, turkey, beef, sausage. So I'm gonna make a spreadsheet that says chicken thigh and how much I have and the date. I'm gonna make ground turkey, how much I have and the date. So when I am going to my freezer to retrieve chicken thighs, I'm going to eat the oldest meat first, meaning the, the, the turkey or the chicken that I just packed today, I'm gonna eat before the chicken I buy maybe next week at the grocery store to freeze for my uh, frozen pantry. That way, when you do refer to your inventory list, you know you have a pack of chicken thighs on there and it's from 1229-22, and that's the one that you're gonna open the door of your freezer and dig around in there to find this bag. Then you're gonna scratch that bag off, and next time you go to the grocery store, just like a working pantry, you're gonna replace what you pulled from there. So again, another benefit of storing it flat like that is you can just stack all of your chicken thighs on top of one another, all of your ground turkey on top of one another, all of your sausages or whatever else you're freezing on top of each other. And that way you're not wasting food, you know exactly what's in your pantry. And I'm gonna make my inventory to sit right on top of the lid of my new chest freezer so that it's a quick reference guide. I walk up to it, I say, what do I want for dinner tonight? Let's have some uh, chicken breast. So I go and I find chicken breast, I find the oldest one that I made, pull that out, scratch it off, 
and then on my clipboard or, or my inventory, I know next time I go to the grocery store to replace what I took from there. Another great benefit and probably the best benefit of storing meat and freezing it is because you've all seen the meat shortages over the last year and it's a very unpredictable market right now. So buying meat when it's one available and two um, priced right, maybe some sales. You can go out and buy uh, several pounds of whatever meat is on sale to put it in your freezer bags because you know this is gonna be good for two to three years from now. So you have a lot more time to eat what you're storing and not worrying about it going bad. So uh, shrinking your food down, getting all the air out, it's gonna last uh, a long time. And I recommend that you do put the investment in a $60 food saver and a $250 freezer. Find a place in your house to put it and get prepped on your meats. I want to touch real quick about power outages. And I know we are preppers and we are always looking at, you know, the power grid going down and thinking about um, SHTF and, uh, you know, things that can make your electricity turn off. What you want to consider is purchasing a generator to power your freezer if it does go off. If your freezer goes off, frozen food in a stocked freezer is usually good for about 48 hours before it's gonna completely defrost and begin to spoil. So here's a little hack that um, you could all do at home. And it's basically to know if your power goes out and say you're on vacation, you're not home for a few days. You're gonna take a, a glass, you're gonna fill it with water and you're gonna freeze that water. Then you're gonna take a quarter, put it on top of that frozen water and you're gonna put that in your freezer. Now, if you come back from vacation or you're gone for several hours or several days or whatever, and you check that freezer and that quarter's not still on top of the ice, maybe it's halfway down, maybe it's all the way at the bottom. You know that you've had either a partial melting of your freezer if the quarter might be submerged or if it's at the bottom, you had a complete defrost of your, of your refrigerator and you don't know how long it was for. You would assume it's more than 48 hours because you completely have everything defrosted and that's when your meats are going to spoil and I wouldn't eat stuff if it was questionable. Getting a generator can prevent this because I plan on spending a lot of money over the next several weeks on getting meats frozen in my frozen food pantry. So I do have a generator and if you haven't seen that review of my Furman generator, I'll link it right here. If I can do that, I don't know, maybe magic. And I also have a great power outage video. My power outage video is my number one video on YouTube right now. So it has a lot of good tips on staying warm, staying cool, how to uh, basically survive a short-term or long-term power outage. And I'll link that too. So you're gonna wanna get a generator, invest in a generator, put it on your wish list. Every prepper should have a generator. Now, gasoline, propane, uh, natural gas generators, tri-fuel generators, they are pretty cheap. Um, but the problem is, is that they are very loud and they emit a lot of toxic gas. So you cannot have them in your home. You actually wanna have them outside about 20 feet from your living space because of carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, solar generators are great. Uh, solar generators can also be charged in a wall plug when the power's on. Stick it in your garage, stick it wherever you have it. When the power goes out, um, you can pull it out plug your refrigerator into it. Um, you're gonna wanna power just your essential stuff, like your refrigerators. Um, maybe charge cell phones, and uh, that way you're not at risk of losing hundreds and hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars of perishable foods. Now, solar generators are great, they're quiet. They're also about double the price right now of a fuel source generator. So start saving some money, start putting that away buy a generator because you never know when you're going to need it. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with me toward the end. Hopefully you got something out of this today and it gets your brain start thinking about possibly starting a frozen or freezer pantry. Now, everything I said today regarding freezing, freezing and storing your foods can apply to your normal freezer in your refrigerator as well in your kitchen. So even if you're um, putting a little bit away, a lot goes a long way in the prepping world. So having maybe five, six, seven pounds of meat put away for a rainy day might just save you in the long run. 
And guys, I just want to remind you that when it comes to prepping, when it comes to life, the only one responsible for your safety is you. So refuse to be a victim. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. All right, here we go. Putting it in the freezer. There she is. There she blows. Open this up. And yes, I don't have my inventory list yet. We're gonna stick that right on the bottom, right there. Heck yeah.